The love for all living creatures is the most noble attribute of man. The most important factor in survival is neither intelligence nor strength, but adaptability. The world will not be inherited by the strongest. It will be inherited by those most able to change. I have no great quickness of apprehension or wit, which is so remarkable in some clever men, for instance Huxley. Nothing exists for itself alone, but only in relation to other forms of life. It is not the biggest, the brightest, or the best that will survive, but those who adapt the quickest. The mystery of the beginning of all things is insoluble by us, and I for one must be content to remain an agnostic. A man who dares to waste one hour of time has not discovered the value of life. Building a better mouse trap merely results in smarter mice. We are always slow in admitting any great change of which we do not see the intermediate steps. The more one thinks, the more one feels the hopeless immensity of man's ignorance. Ignorance more frequently begets confidence than does knowledge. In the long history of humankind and animal kind too, those who learn to collaborate and improvise most effectively have prevailed. An agnostic would be the more correct description of my state of mind. Free will is to mind what chance is to matter. Even people who aren't geniuses and I think the rest of mankind, if they develop certain thinking habits. A moral being is one who is capable of reflecting on his past actions and their motives, of approving of some and disapproving of others. Some call it evolution and others call it God. It is impossible to conceive of this immense and wonderful universe as the result of blind chance or necessity. To kill an error is as good a service as, and sometimes even better than, the establishing of a new truth or fact. It is not the most intellectual of the species that survives, it is not the strongest that survives. But the species that survives is the one that is able best to adapt and adjust to the changing environment in which it finds itself. I have tried lately to read Shakespeare and found it so intolerably dull that it nauseated me. The highest possible stage in moral culture is when we recognize that we ought to control our thoughts. Not one change of species into another is on record. We cannot prove that a single species has been changed. The question of whether there exists a creator and ruler of the universe has been answered in the affirmative by some of the highest intellects that have ever existed. There is no fundamental difference between man and animals in their ability to feel pleasure and pain, happiness and misery. It is always advisable to perceive clearly our ignorance. If I had my life to live over again, I would have made a rule to read some poetry and listen to some music at least once every week. Intelligence is based on how efficient a species became at doing the things they need to survive. Only the fittest will survive. A man's friendships are one of the best measures of his worth. It is a cursed evil to any man to become as absorbed in any subject as I am in mine. It's not the strongest, but the most adaptable that survive. Ignorance more frequently begets confidence than does knowledge. 
It is those who know little, and not those who know much, who so positively assert that this or that problem will never be solved by science. Freedom of thought is best promoted by the gradual elimination of men's minds which follows from the advance of science. On the ordinary view of each species having been independently created, we gain no scientific explanation. The moral faculties are generally and justly esteemed as of high value than the intellectual powers. 